as a constitutional law attorney, former senior legal advisor and personal counsel to President Donald J. Trump. Jenna Ellis believes in the rule of law and the importance of integrity in our elections. And she's ready to tackle the big cultural and legal issues facing America. This is The Jenna Ellis Show. Here is your host, Jenna Ellis. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of The Jenna Ellis Show. I'm Jenna Ellis, and today we are going to review the Barbie movie. This was actually so much fun and I went and saw it. And I know that a lot of people were wondering, why would a Christian go and see this film? Well, I think it's incredibly important for Christians to understand pop culture and also uh, go and see movies so that we can comment on them from the position of actually having watched it. There are so many people that are just taking other reviews and running with them that may not necessarily reflect what they would have as their own view. Now, of course, if you are a parent and you're contemplating allowing your kids to go and see movies, of course, you should look at the reviews and you should look at the film yourself potentially before having your kids go see it. So for Christians and for conservatives, I think it's really important that we go and see things for ourselves in terms of pop culture so that we can have a sophisticated and personal review and decide for ourselves what we think about engaging in culture. So if you are one of those people that just says, Jenna, I absolutely want nothing to do with anything that is not explicitly a Christian message, well, then that's your choice and that's fine. And probably you're not going to be able to to go and see almost any movie, because of course, Barbie isn't specifically or explicitly Christian. We have to derive as Christians, is the theme of the Barbie movie at all consistent with the biblical worldview, even if it doesn't mean to, or are there secular themes that go against what the Bible tells us is true? We should always be evaluating that. We have to be Christians that live in a secular culture. We have to be Christians that live in an America corporate oligarchy. And for those who just want to boycott everything and say, I can't be a Christian unless I support companies, movies, entities, uh, anything that isn't specifically Christian, you're going to have a very, very difficult time living in America. And that can be your choice and that's fine. But I think as Christians, we need to step back and say, is there content in the secular entertainment industry or books that are written or historical films from years ago that are actually valuable for Christian. Whether or not that's the Barbie movie, well, we're going to talk about that right after this. With inflation, the banking world collapse, and everything that Joe Biden is doing not to protect America, you need to make sure to secure your financial health, especially in retirement. And hey, if you're a millennial like me, that actually is sooner than you think. You need to start now, even if you are a millennial or a Gen Zer, to make sure that your financial health is actually healthy when we get to retirement. And Legacy Precious Metals has a revolutionary new online platform that allows you to invest in gold and silver online in real time. In a few easy steps, you can open an account online, select your metals of choice, and choose to have them stored in a vault or shipped right to your door. You'll have access to a dashboard where you can track your portfolio growth in real time anytime. You'll see transparent pricing on each coin and bar, and this puts you in complete control of your money. The platform is free to sign up for. Visit LegacyPMInvestments.com and open your account and see this new investing platform for yourself. Gold hedges against inflation and against a volatile stock market. A truly diversified portfolio isn't just more stocks and bonds, but different asset classes. This brand new platform allows you to make investments in gold and silver, no matter how small or large, with just a few clicks. Visit LegacyPM.com to get started. You can download the free investor's guide and you can also call Legacy PM Investments to talk to a portfolio expert to get expert answers to your uh, to customize your personal portfolio. So visit LegacyPMInvestments.com to get started. Tell them that Jenna sent you. All right, so let's get into the Barbie movie. So first of all, as I said in the introduction and the opening, we need to always evaluate any sort of entertainment or book or anything that we participate in as Christians from a biblical worldview perspective. And some of that is going to be a very clear distinction between what is sin and we should never participate in as Christians, or it can fall under what 1 Corinthians 8 talks about in terms of 
one's conscience and what is wisdom for a Christian. That can vary. It's not to say that it's subjective or that truth is subjective, but some things that you or I might be comfortable with doing, other Christians may not be comfortable with doing. Or something that I may not be comfortable doing, other Christians would be comfortable with. And this is exactly what Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians 8. So I want to read this really quick. And this is concerning food sacrifice to idols. This was a really big deal to the New Testament Christians uh, in the context of eating meat that was offered and sacrificed to idols in the pagan religion of their day in Corinth. And if you uh, know anything about that time period and Roman history, then you know about the pagan temple. And so some Christians uh, thought that that was absolutely wrong. Their conscience would not allow them to participate in anything that was at all connected to a pagan ritual. And that was modern. It wasn't even some of the controversies like today that we have over Christmas trees or Easter and calling it Easter and some of those things. Those are very valuable questions for the Christian. And some Christians were saying, well, I know that those gods don't exist. And what does it matter? Meat is still good food that God has provided. And it doesn't matter to me because I didn't participate in that ceremony. And I'm totally fine. Meat is meat. So what does the Bible have to say about this? Well, Paul says now about food sacrifice to idols. We know that we possess knowledge. We all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. Those who think they know something do not yet know as they ought to know. But whoever loves God is known by God. So then about eating food sacrificed to idols, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or earth, as indeed there are many quote-unquote gods and many quote-unquote lords, yet for us there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came and for whom we all live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. But not everyone possesses this knowledge. Some people are still so accustomed to idols that when they eat sacrificial food, they think of it as having been sacrificed to a God. And since their conscience is weak, it is defiled. But food does not bring us near to God. We are no worse if we do not eat it and no better if we do. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge eating in an idol's temple, won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause them to fall. So the whole point of this particular passage is that Paul is saying, don't exercise your freedom in Christ in a way that causes other brothers and sisters in Christ to stumble. So for me, my intent in going to see the Barbie movie or posting going to Disneyland or, you know, some of these things that other brothers and sisters in Christ would say I could never do is not at all to encourage anyone who their conscience says, I can't participate in that activity as a Christian for me to encourage you otherwise. That would be me encouraging you to go against your conscience. And as the, as the scripture clearly says, freedom in Christ is not meant to encourage others to go against their own conscience. But it also says that those who have a conscience that can't participate in certain things that the freedom in Christ clearly says are not sinful, well, that person is termed a weaker brother. And so we do have freedom in Christ to have wisdom issues. And this covers a lot of different things. Like, for example, I'm asked all the time to speak in churches. Some churches have uh, different systems of the way that they, uh, that they have their church and that they build uh, their church's methods and functions. Now, of course, we all should agree as Christians that women cannot be pastors, cannot be members of the ecclesia. However, some churches see no problem with a woman like me, who is not holding myself out as a pastor, to teach on a Sunday morning 
from the pulpit about the Constitution and about uh, the First Amendment and how we as Christians need to understand what uh, what we sh- as Christians should do with respect to religious freedom and how we confront the issues of our day. That's not in any way being a pastor. That's being a lawyer. And that is coming to a church for edification of the entire body because I've given legal advice to churches. I've represented pastors in my capacity as an attorney. That doesn't mean that I'm a member of the Ecclesia or I'm holding myself out as uh, being a pastor. But for some other churches, having a woman speak on Sunday mornings is not their style and that would cause some of their members to question that. So if I'm asked instead to speak on a Sunday night or a Wednesday night or in Sunday school, for example, I happily do that. I don't have a conscience issue with speaking on Sunday morning from the pulpit because I know that I'm not going against scripture. However, if that particular church has an issue with that and that would cause some of their members to question things and to stumble, I'm totally happy not trying to go against their conscience and speaking at a different time. The same thing is true with churches with respect to what women wear. Uh, I will always ask churches, do you have kind of a dress code that's expected or that's just culture in this particular church? I don't want to offend anyone unnecessarily. Now, with regard to social media, there's a lot of people that I offend that I don't really care because they're just trolling. me. But in terms of posting things like going to see the Barbie movie so that I can review it or going to Disneyland so I can have lunch at a nice restaurant, those things may offend certain brothers and sisters in Christ. But my intention is never going to be to tell them go against your conscience rights. And it's not going to be uh, for the purpose of flaunting my freedom in Christ. It's always going to be for the purpose of having a conversation and saying, how do we as Christians live in the midst of a secular world and live out our faith? And for some people who can go and see movies like Barbie and say, hey, I want to listen to the philosophy that is clearly being articulated from Hollywood so that I can have responses to that. I say, go for it. And that's exactly what I do as a Christian. I want to know what pop culture is teaching. I want to know what uh, the politicians on the left are saying. I want to know what the entertainment and news industry is saying so that I can have responses based on a Christian worldview. I also don't expect Hollywood to have a particularly Christian message. That's not who they are. So can I go and participate as a Christian and actually enjoy something like the Barbie movie as a Christian? Well, I think so. And I think that it's a matter of wisdom. If your conscience dictates otherwise, that's between you and the Lord. But as far as the Bible is concerned, it is not a sin to go and see the Barbie movie or to go and see another movie that is not explicitly, for example, pornography or isn't explicitly themes that are contrary to the word of God. And we do need to be careful when it comes to our kids because kids are so much more impressionable. We can, as adults, as Christians, confront themes that are particularly and explicitly against a Christian worldview, and we can contrast that and we can have responses. So uh, with all of that said, what should conservatives and Christians think about the themes in the Barbie movie? Well, I actually thought that the Barbie movie was a lot less woke than a lot of conservatives automatically suggested. Now, uh, this film was definitely geared toward adult women. That is their primary audience. And for anyone you know, like me who had Barbies as kids uh, and anyone who grew up between you know, the 60s through the 90s when Barbie was kind of at her peak, Uh, This is the movie that was geared toward us as adults. It is not a kid's movie. It has some adult themes and it also has an explicit uh, condemnation and critique of the emptiness of feminism, which I thought was quite fascinating. It actually had uh, the, the theme that a completely female dominated culture that is a Barbie land and a feminist utopia was ultimately empty. And Barbie at the end, and there are some spoilers in this, obviously, So turn this off now if you want to go see it for yourself and don't want the spoilers. But uh, Barbie at the end of the movie actually apologizes to Ken and says, I think I took you for granted because the Kens in Barbie land existed solely just to be looked at and to uh, be to please Barbie. And Barbie dominated uh, females, dominated the Supreme Court, the government, all of the jobs had all of the fine things and everything was a feminist utopia. It was girls night every night. And that's what uh, Barbie is saying at the beginning of the movie. By the end of it, there is actually a critique of this feminist view that men are expendable and that the Kens really just exist to please Barbie. And this idea that no, Ken actually has value in and of himself. 
that's actually a really good theme. That's something that a not explicitly Christian movie is teaching from a secular perspective that's actually true. Because we know that secular reality isn't necessarily always in conflict with the truth or the biblical worldview. There are friends of mine, for example, James Lindsay, who I think is completely spot on in what he comments about Marxism, about wokeism, about so many other things. I have him on my show and my radio program frequently, because even though he tell he he is he says very openly that he's an atheist, he's an agnostic, he doesn't believe in uh, the biblical worldview. What he's saying is still true. And there is still truth under uh, the doctrine of common grace that even people who are not explicitly Christians or affirm the biblical worldview can still say things and teach things that are true. So we need to have a much more sophisticated perspective and not out of hand reject everything from Hollywood or from uh, someone who is an atheist or from someone who isn't coming from an expressly Christian worldview because we sometimes can find things that are true. And the Barbie movie does actually have a really good critique of the emptiness of modern feminism. There is also a theme uh, that, that a lot of conservatives have expressed negatively, that there is a monologue by America Ferreira, who is a human that comes to Barbie land. She used to play with Barbie. She's now an adult. She's a mother. She has her own daughter. And they have kind of this estranged relationship that then comes back into um, really a a great relationship at the end of the film. And she has this kind of monologue um, for a few minutes toward the end of the film that talks about the difficulties of being a woman. And a lot of men I, that are conservatives, that that was interesting to me, immediately condemned this as promoting feminism. And as I watched this, I actually thought, no, she's just articulating how difficult genuinely it is to be a woman in modern culture. And especially in the realm of social media, of Instagram, of having to look perfect, be perfect, act perfect, perfect while still being, you know, this strong kind of, you know, badass woman um, and, and have all of these different Uh, different aspects of modern day femininity that are expected of women that is really high pressure. And so I thought that was an interesting, uh, real evaluation of the pressures of modern society that this character of America Ferreira talks about wanting to be a mom and wanting to have a great relationship with her daughter. That's a good thing. And so this also Uh, interestingly, is a condemnation of the patriarchy, right? Because in the real world, uh, the Kens are the ones that are in control. And I think it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's trying to draw a contrast between Barbie land and modern day feminism with what is perceived as this domineering patriarchal culture that women find uh, today and have, have expressed in terms of modern feminism. And so the goal here, as I perceived it as a viewer in the movie, is to draw this contrast between patriarchy and a matriarchy. And the the ultimate uh, thought and the ultimate critique in the film is that neither of those two views for society is a good thing. If we have too much male domination and women aren't valued, they're just objectified, that's wrong. And that's not a good thing for society. And if we have totally the reverse of that and the utopia of feminist ideals and men are totally expendable and everybody's a can and we don't even care and we take them for granted and men don't contribute anything to society, well, then that's wrong and that's not the right value either. So it is, in a sense, kind of more about equality. And obviously, equality from a biblical perspective, uh, we need to be to view as genuinely complementarianism. That did not come across at all in the film. It was more about how men and women are totally equal, and we should strive to have total equality everywhere. It missed the mark on that. I think the expression of how a patriarchal and matriarchal dominant society are both wrong was correct. But the end result saying we need to just have total equality, there's no real difference in terms of societal roles between men and women, missed the mark. Because the biblical worldview teaches us complementarianism. It teaches us that men and women have different roles in the church and the family and even in society. And we need to respect and appreciate those differences because those are God ordained. And a complementarian view would say that men and women are equally inheritors of the kingdom, we are equally made in the image of God, have equal inherent dignity and worth, but different roles. God made us to be different. 
And interestingly, I think without meaning to, the Barbie movie did make a very clear distinction between men and women. I found that really refreshing, honestly, in an age when the LGBTQ agenda would tell us that queer theory and uh, this whole trans theory means that we are totally blurring the lines between men and women, and there's no real difference between the Kens and the Barbies. This movie very clearly drew those distinctions. Honestly, I didn't even notice the transgender Barbie that apparently had like a little cameo in the film. It was not a dude in a dress that was obviously so. It was a very, very, very effeminate man that was dressed totally like a woman, almost like in drag. That uh, to me, until I started looking at some of the other reviews after seeing it, I thought, wow, there wasn't even anything trans in this movie. Well, I missed it. And um, and I think that you will, too, unless you're obviously looking for it. They did have that one representation, which, of course, is wrong and, of course, is unfortunate. But the overall overarching theme was that men are Kens, women are Barbies. There is a very clear distinction and there are only two sexes. That for 2023, I thought was really remarkable. And so this wasn't actually as woke as uh, you would have thought. The overall movie, um, and I'm no you know, Hollywood uh, commentator in terms of was the lighting or the cinematography or, you know, the score of the film. I'm not going to get into all of those things because I'm just an average person uh, watching a movie as someone who wants to critique the ideology, not necessarily the cinematography. But in terms of the overall movie, it was totally campy and it was making fun of kind of the ideal of what uh, we as kids used to do in terms of playing with Barbie. And I thought that that really resonated with every little girl who has ever played with Barbie. And we know that like the arch of her feet, she's constantly in this position so that she can wear heels. And, you know, if you, you were, were a little girl like me that walked around on tiptoes and then had like the ballerina shoes and tried to walk on, you know, the points um, to, to pretend that you're a ballerina because every little girl wanted to be Clara in the Nutcracker Ballet, right? All of those things really spoke to the childhood that all of us really loved experiencing from, you know, whether you were in the early 60s when Barbie first came out until kind of the mid 90s when um, Barbie wasn't as big of a deal. And, you know, I was an 80s kid. I was born in 1984. And so, you know, grew up with American Girl Dolls, grew up with Barbie, grew up with, um, you know, all of these uh, Polly Pocket, you know, I mean, all of these things that were just so much fun. Um, in childhood. And my parents, of course, trained me in the biblical worldview, but they also didn't have this expectation that I couldn't be part of regular culture and have um, toys that that didn't, of course, go against a biblical worldview, but that I could create and imagine for myself. And I'm really glad that I had that childhood. And one of the themes that I really loved about the Barbie movie was that that, that kind of nostalgia and that era of just playing with toys and being a kid and especially being a little girl who loves fashion and pink and Barbie land and, you know, the Barbie dream house and the convertible and all of those things. That's, that's an era that's so far gone by. And that kind of nostalgia, I, I think really resonated with Barbie's target audience. And so if you're a guy, if you're the Ben Shapiro's who are critiquing this movie, I think that's going to be totally lost on all of the guys, all of the Kens out there. And that's okay because this movie was geared toward a specific audience. You have a lot of the, you know, war movies and other things that are geared to men. And that's totally okay. Again, that's not necessarily a bad thing to have a movie that's geared toward a specific demographic, a specific sex and a specific audience. So overall, in closing, there were a lot of really great themes that I think uh, were valuable in having fuller conversations of the Barbie movie. It's not for kids. It's for uh, the adults who we used to play with Barbie. And I think ultimately, I was pleasantly surprised that it was fun. It was cute. It didn't have, you know, overtly sexualized themes. And it also was not nearly as woke as I was anticipating. The critique and comment of this utopia land of feminism, I think shows that maybe, just maybe, our culture is pulling back and saying, we need to not have men as expendable, which is kind of the third iteration of feminism. We need to respect that men have a role in society. And for Christian women, we absolutely need to respect the God-ordained position of genuine, truthful, biblical masculinity and femininity. 
So I hope that if you are conservative and you go see this movie and you're a Christian, you will draw out these themes and be able to have a fuller and more robust conversation with maybe even your non-Christian friends who've gone to see it and say, well, what did you think about the, the feminist utopia? And what did you think about Barbie saying, yeah, I took Ken for granted. What do you think about where our culture is headed? And this can actually be a conversation starter that then you can have those conversations with some of your friends and open up a conversation that will ultimately lead to the truth of the gospel of Christ. And that's the reason that I love being part of pop culture. And I go and see some of these movies so that I can engage in conversations. One of my favorite places is on an airplane when I'm sitting next to somebody for several hours and I engage them in conversation. And this is a great topic. So did you see the Barbie movie? what do you think of it? So as Christians, let's be part of the world. Let's have freedom in Christ. Follow your conscience. Absolutely. But let's learn to live in the world without being part of the world and ultimately advance the truth of the gospel of Christ. With inflation, the banking world collapse, and everything that Joe Biden is doing not to protect America, you need to make sure to secure your financial health, especially in retirement. And hey, if you're a millennial like me, that actually is sooner than you think. You need to start now, even if you are a millennial or a Gen Zer, to make sure that your financial health is actually healthy when we get to retirement. And Legacy Precious Metals has a revolutionary new online platform that allows you to invest in gold and silver online in real time. In a few easy steps, you can open an account online, select your metals of choice, and choose to have them stored in a vault or shipped right to your door. You'll have access to a dashboard where you can track your portfolio growth in real time anytime. You'll see transparent pricing on each coin and bar, and this puts you in complete control of your money. The platform is free to sign up for. Visit LegacyPMInvestments.com and open your account and see this new investing platform for yourself. Gold hedges against inflation and against a volatile stock market. A truly diversified portfolio isn't just more stocks and bonds, but different asset classes. This brand new platform allows you to make investments in gold and silver, no matter how small or large, with just a few clicks. Visit LegacyPM.com to get started. You can download the free investor's guide and you can also call Legacy PM Investments to talk to a portfolio expert to get expert answers to your uh, to customize your personal portfolio. So visit LegacyPMInvestments.com to get started. Tell them that Jenna sent you. On MyPillow's 20-year anniversary with over 80 million MyPillows sold, Mike Lindell wants to thank each and every one of you by giving you the lowest price in history on his MyPillows. You will receive a queen-size MyPillow for only $19.98. The regular price is $69.98 and just $10 more for a king size. You'll receive deep discounts on all my pillow products, such as bed sheets, mattress toppers, pet beds, mattresses, my slippers, which I love, and so much more. This is the time to try out some of the amazing products you've had your eye on from my pillow. So go to mypillow.com and enter promo code Jenna to receive this amazing offer on the queen size my pillow for $19.98. You can go to mypillow.com or call 1-800-564- 8475. Be sure to use the promo code Jenna. This offer comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money, ba money back guarantee. It's time to start getting the quality sleep you deserve. This offer comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money back guarantee. It's time to start getting the quality sleep you deserve. Go to mypillow.com, use the promo code Jenna. <laughs> 